I'm sure we all have memories as teenagers trying to sneak into the drive-in by hiding under a blanket or perhaps even stashing a few friends in the trunk. We always thought we were being so clever. But it turns out that the drive-in owners have been on to us for years. Hi. Good. Three? You may see two in the front seat, and they'll say, well, we got four in the trunk. You know, you hear that probably two or three times a night. Through the woods, through the trees, and they'll come out right here with mud up to their um, knees, because there's a swamp down there, and they don't know it until they get halfway through. But mostly it's kids. They're uh, teenagers and uh, younger than that. Like, you know, the kid, once you get to be 13, you have to pay, so that hide in the trunk, hide someplace. I know the kids were free. They're always supposed to be under 12. And everybody was 12, and every once in a while you'd get one and he'd say, Dad, I am 12. <laughs> he tried to get them through. <laughs> and by the way, I don't tell the parents of anybody that, uh, that sneaked in. I keep that a secret between them and myself. It's a thread over their heads. <laughs> he wants me to ask you if you got any people in the trunk. No, no, no. And no tour of drive-ins would be complete if we didn't mention the quintessential speaker on a pole. Sleepy and in a rush to get home, often after a dusk till dawn show, who hasn't driven off with one of these babies still hanging onto their car window? We lost quite a few speakers. People would sometimes forget them. The ones that forgot them usually had a broken window. They'd take a chunk right out of the window. But some just cut them. The post was never moved, but the speaker was gone. Well, they would take the inside of the moat. All they wanted was the little speaker inside, and that was further in, the, in their car. But they could hook it up if they wanted, but they wanted to get rid of the case. We'd, lots of times we'd find the cases on the side of the road. This predates me. I, I, maybe when I was 10, when I went to a drive-in in, in Hamilton, I'd, I'd recall this. It's tinny, bad sound, and the maintenance from our side, from the exhibition side, presenting the film, just horrendous amounts of time maintaining 700 little tiny speakers. And now it's empty, but uh, not many uh, this speaker everywhere. But a lot of people like it too, you know. And does this still work? Still work, very good. It's 60 years old, you know. Here's a good story. Only a couple of weeks ago, we had somebody come into our snack bar, an elderly gentleman, and he started complaining, wouldn't let us get a word in about what sort of premises we were running here, that we'd been vandalized, that there were no speakers on any of the poles. One time I had to chase the guy up Highway 11 there. He didn't realize that he had thrown the, the, um, the speaker out at the end of the show and it caught on his back bumper and he yanked the pole and the post and the concrete block and everything and was racing up the highway and thought I was chasing him for something and <laughs> it was funny. We visited one drive-in that has eight rows of vintage speakers. The speakers may be old, but they still do the job. Well, we have all this, so why? And it works fine. So if some people say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, you know, so, and it works fine for us. And a lot of people come they, because they bring their kids and they say, well, hey, we want our kids to see what, what we used to see. Oh, they all drive off with speakers. I remember one girl, she was... A, daughter of a friend and uh, she came crying into the, into the concession and, she's, and uh, she said, you know, I've, I've torn off the speaker, what do I do? And my husband, ex-husband just said, well, uh, like, you know, just leave it here, that's fine, we'll fix it. And that's all we do is we just fix them again. They're just wires, you know, you wire them together again and that's it. While in Watra, Saskatchewan, visiting Bert Crawford's Jubilee Drive-In, we heard about Little Manitou Lake. The lake, fed by deep underground springs, contains so many salts that it's impossible to sink. We put the lake to the test by throwing in the camera operator. The Cree called it Lake of the Good Spirit because it was believed to possess healing properties. 
Some say that for hundreds and hundreds of years, the very same people have been returning to the lake time and again for its rejuvenating qualities. We visited many parts of this country, meeting the people who run our drive-ins and those who support them. We dropped in on the folks who live along the Atlantic, and when we could see over the corn, we spoke to the moviegoers in southern Ontario. And after driving for hours and hours along the beautiful prairies, we chatted up whoever we stumbled upon. All these efforts were made to discover just how our drive-ins were doing. We could have visited more places and spoke to more people, but we were beginning to figure out that there really are no regional differences amongst us when it comes to our love of movies, the comfort of our cars, our appreciation of the outdoors, and our need for community. Yes, thousands of Canadians enjoy our drive-ins, but what does their future hold? It is true in some cases that drive-ins are declining, but each individual drive-in is its own little economic industry. Each individual drive-in is unique and some that were built at the edge of cities in the 50s, the cities expanded right up to them, through them, and uh, they've vanished. Other ones that were built like this out in the middle of the rural area uh, are surviving quite nicely. As long as you keep popular movies coming, people will come back and see them. It's, it's a different experience. It's a lot of fun to watch them outside as opposed to in the theater that we always do. For the size of town we're in here, I'm sometimes surprised to see a full house. And uh, to me, that says uh, the business is healthy. I know that if, as long as a community supports uh, drive-in or any business, well, it will stay. But if, when, it, when it stops supporting, well, then it doesn't stay. And if the Canadian Customs would open up the customs till, till 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night would help us immensely too, but they won't, so that's that. People have, Americans that come over, they have to drive back to Boise Bay and go around that way, even though they're living across the border here. If it wasn't for the resorts around here, we'd, we'd have been shut down years ago. There's numerous little towns that don't offer a lot of entertainment in the summertime, so we don't have a great deal of competition. That helps a lot. And... Uh, I, I like to think that we show people a good time when they come here. I think this one here will be around for a long time for sure. I mean, they have a great turnout here. I can't imagine phasing this one out. I mean, there'd be a lot of disappointed people around here. I do see a future for driving. It's, it's just uh, that it's not going to be the way it was in the, in the early years, like when they first started. They're coming back a little bit better now. And I think statistics prove that they are, but not that much, not the way they were in the 1960s. We know the drive-ins are not going to re-experience their heyday of the 1950s and 60s, but is their next step in popularity up or down? To uh, put the capital into, into equipment and land, right now I honestly don't think it would pay. Uh, and as evidence that there isn't very many or any drive-ins being built, it's just too expensive. But if you've got the equipment, you're there, you're already established, uh, you know, you. It's okay. If you find a nice little gem somewhere that has the, the right population nearby, uh, a tourist area like we are here in Brackley Beach uh, that we, we can draw from the tourists, we can draw from the local crowd, it's just a, you're always supplied with, with, with customers uh, that can come to the screen. I think there's a great future in driving up the theaters. Uh, they just continue, it's like an antique car. It just continues to grow in value because people just love to come to the drive-in. That's the one thing I enjoy about the job, is just people just love to come here and they just say thank you, thank you for keeping it open. Hi there. Hi. Fellow drive-in owner in um, Buffalo uh, said that as long as there's sunsets, there'll be drive-ins. And I thought that was quite a uh, nice saying. For me, as a boy growing up, the closing of the drive-in always signaled the end of summer. School was about to begin, the days were getting shorter, and three far too short months of adventure were behind me. Many people have asked, well, gee, why don't you put the movies on in the wintertime? We'll come out in the snowmobiles and all that. Well, I don't know. I don't think it would work, really. <laughs> I'm one of the snowbirds that uh, goes down south, so that's... It's not really a sad time, it's kind of an enjoyable time. When we're all finished, we can get things rounded up and head down south for a while. Quite often, it's like, it feels like eight days a week that we're working because it's every night of the week. Just this year, I've decided to close a couple of nights, not for lack of business, but because I'm not a spring chicken anymore. First thing I like to do is recover. 
Uh, it does take a bit out of you, uh, especially after the July, August, where we go six nights a week. And we're at that point right now, we're kind of stretched to a degree. I really don't get depressed when the drive-in's closed until it starts to snow. Then, you know, there's no hope until spring. And uh, this time of year, I usually want to go someplace warm. California, Miami, any place that's got drive-ins that are still open, I can go see a, a nice show down there and place with a beach, a warm beach, not covered with snow or ice. A drive-in is essentially an empty field. There's a giant screen at the front and a small, unremarkable building at the back. But of course, the drive-in is much, much more than that. It's the friends and the family that we come with and the neighbors that we'll see when we get there. It's the welcoming face at the gate or the smiling young person who hands us our popcorn. Put another way, we go to the drive-in to experience the simple, honest pleasure of enjoying a movie together where no one will ever say, shh. Watch the movie. Well, almost no one.